So I will now turn to uh, say something about trends in family arrangements, uh, especially since recent developments in parenting support policies have occurred in the wake of changing family arrangements. I begin with the German case. Um, fertility rates have always been low. Non-marital birth has become much more common, 61% in the East and 29 in the West. Married parents have more children than non-married ones, 41% versus 28% of non-married. And nearly 75% of children below the age of 18 lived with their married parents, 18% in single parent households and 9% in non-marital unions in 2015. And divorce rates have to some extent decreased during the 2000s. There is also an increased immigration of younger single men and families with young children. And here is uh, a diagram uh, showing the German case. Uh, I couldn't find a similar one yet uh, for, for, for the Swedish case, but you can see here, uh, yeah, you can see here what she's done. The, the yellow one is it's men and women seeking protection. So the red one is foreign born population and the black one is the total population. And uh, male and uh, uh, female and how many they are. In the Swedish case, uh, fertility rates are relatively high. Uh, one common explanation is, is, is that it's likely due to the generous <laughs> family policies. But when the economic crisis hit Sweden during the 1990s, fertility rates decreased dramatically, only to increase again when new family reforms were implemented in the early 2000s. A max taxation was set and introduced to childcare, so it's relatively cheap at still. Uh, so according to Statistics Sweden, more children had parents with higher education in 2013 than in 1970s. It's also more common that one of the parents is born outside of Sweden an increasing number of families reside in urban areas, while the share of families who live in the countryside had decreased. Moreover, in 2013, almost half of the population were living in a couple relationship. About 70% of them were married or registered partners, and the rest cohabited. cohabited. Separation and divorces have also increased during the 20th century, however, not dramatically since the 70s. 17% of all families are lone mothers, and about 20% of all children under 18 have separated or divorced parents, to be compared with 15% in the 70s. There is also, just in the German case, an increased immigration of younger single men and families with young children. And at the moment, many attempts to develop parenting support policies and measures for this particular group is ongoing. So, how then can we see the emergence and features of new social risk policies in Germany and Sweden? So, I begin again with Germany. Uh, in Germany, a new turn to parenting materialized in the first decade of the new millennium. A number of important drivers can be identified due to increasing volatility <coughs> in families and also neglect of young children sparked off a debate and call for preventive measures. <coughs> in 2005, a number of new rules and procedures were introduced, targeting parents and framed as a social investment. Five recurring themes can be identified in new family support measure for families. A focus on, on improving parental competence, a new emphasis on prevention, a new monitoring role for child care centers, cooperation and coordination as a never-ending task, and the issue of evaluation. 
The same for Sweden, uh, the same development in Sweden, parenting support aim at facilitating all parents to, and now I quote the government, to provide for children to gain good health and a positive upbringing and to prevent chi child against ill health and social problems. That's the definition of parenting support in Sweden today. <coughs> The current emphasis on public health grew out of the profound economic crisis in the 90s and the restructuring of the welfare state. Parenting support policies as it developed during the 2000s was also framed by both the social democratic and the alliance government, the right wing government, <coughs> as a social investment or as an investment in human capital as it was argued. A healthy population it was argued was seen as a way of reducing public spendings, but also as a way of increasing economic growth. So at the same time, the center right wing government in power between 2006 and 14, we don't have a government at the moment as you might know, <laughs> uh, reintroduced the importance of the family as a concept in pol policy debates. This was new since the 70s. Uh, the argument has always been in family policies that we are discussing in terms of individuals or men and women, but all of a sudden all of us, all, the family came back as a concept, which is very interesting. So thus, two parallel processes shaped current parenting support policies. First, increasing emphasis on the role on the, of the parents in preventing ill health among children and youth. And second, the reintroduction of a gender-blind terminology in family policy debates. And this differs from the more traditional family policy measures, like the parental leave, for example. So in addition, the dual earner model was challenged in a way by the alliance government and now also uh, continuously by the social green government, notably when questioning the possibility to combine work and family life. It was argued I in some uh, debates that we might have to take into consideration the well-being of the child instead of being out there working, all of us. And of course, it was the mothers who were targeted, not both men and women, which was interesting. We haven't seen a real change yet, but it's there in the debate.